Hey, hello and welcome. My name is Andy Popovic and this is Biomechanoid Blues, my video blog uh, slash regular blog. And this episode is going to be part of my ongoing horror project. And I'm going to be discussing in specific a short story by an author uh, that I like and admire, uh, Gemma Files. And Uh, you know, this doesn't feel right. Um, hey, listen, can we, can we get the interruption? What do you mean, not this time? We've done, hold on. Gemma Files is an award-winning uh, film critic and writer uh, based out of Canada. She started with a series of small press novels, the Hexlinger series, which were weird westerns in the absolute best sense of the, uh, the word. From there, she went on to build a career as one of the premier writers of horror and weird short fiction. Uh, she's got numerous collections out there. You really can't go wrong with picking any of them up. But the big linchpin that uh, she has driven into the ground at this point is her book, Experimental Film. This is one of my personal favorite novels. Uh, not only does it deal with a subject near and dear to my heart, films that uh, impact people in unusual ways, but it does so in a way that, frankly, is unique to Gemma Files. So I started this with a few exterior shots of my neighborhood, especially some of the uh, biotech businesses that are around here in winter. Um, I wanted to include them for two reasons. One, they always remind me of a setting for like a uh, tax loophole era David Cronenberg film. Like you could uh, see a cast member from, uh, from Scanners or uh, Rabbit just wandering past at, uh, at some point. And uh, I think Gemma would appreciate that. <laughs> but the other thing is because they give a sense of place, a sense of spirit. And that's something that is integral to the story. I first met Gemma Files uh, at my very first reader con. Uh, actually, I was uh, there to see two of my other favorite authors, uh, Caitlin R. Kiernan and Peter Straub, um, and I ran into her at a few panels, and we talked, and uh, she was one of the most generous and open folks. The dangers of location shooting. So, back where I was uh, starting, um, I first met Gemma Files during a, uh, a reader con. I was there to uh, to see 
Peter Straub and Caitlin R. Kiernan, two favorite authors of mine, also happen to be favorite authors of hers. Uh, and I saw her on a few panels, and I got a chance to talk with her. And pretty much uh, as soon as I did that, I went to the uh, dealer's room and picked up her books. And I have been a fan of hers ever since. Uh, as you probably saw with a little retrospective, she has uh, covered quite a bit. And honestly, she is one of the best short story writers out there. So as soon as I saw her name on the uh, year's best horror and realized I was getting into the phase where I needed to start breaking down a short story, I kind of knew this was going to happen. This is more of an extemporaneous thing where I'm just telling you guys a few things that really still stick out to me. And this is after I've read it a couple times, after I've written about it, and after I've been thinking about it. The first thing that honestly does stick out is the whole concept of a place being haunted without a ghost. And I think about that in specific when I'm looking at well, some of the footage that I shot earlier or those winter landscapes, uh, brutalist architecture, the sense that there's something there in those places, something off, a hum you can't get to, ambient noise that's always rushing in, in odd spaces. We often tie this to the idea of genus loci, or the spirit of the place, but most of the time it's about you know natural places and it involves something that has happened there. But this does away with that idea. There isn't like a specific murder that has triggered this. There is no spirit within the uh, within this Airbnb of doom that is generated by someone's malactions. It's just there. It's just a weak spot in the world. And something on the other side is taking advantage of it. The other things that I like is, first, there's no explanation. Uh, we don't have a Professor Quatermass coming in and basically saying, so look here, Rooney, these things are obviously arthropods from Mars. No, there's no one's got an answer. The folks who have encountered this phenomenon before are searching uh, and trying to figure it out. But the other thing is that everyone has encountered it. Gemma opens this short story almost at a, a leisurely pace. Uh, <laughs> I say this because, you know, I'm still in the process of submitting places and I'm terrified of not having something absolutely happen within the first sentence because then some slush reader will, you know, kick it away. But she takes a risk and actually opens this with a moment discussing the nature of strange things. And then hits us with the line, just fucking run. <laughs> so it lets us know that this is not going to be uh, one of those chase films. This is about atmosphere. This is about what happens, the uncanny, the strange in between. And this happens to everyone. Her father's story it's a perfect example of that. Strange things happen all the time. They just get lost in all of the horrid minutia of day-to-day -day life. The other thing is uh, the fact that this is so grounded. Everything that happens here from you know, dealing with the, uh, the, the boyfriend that doesn't want to actually be a boyfriend to the indignities of having to, you know, run these kind of gig jobs to all these other things. They're things that everyone goes through. You know, it's, it's hard to get away from, uh, from them. So uh, 
it gives what happens and the desperation there uh, a tighter edge, a sharper blade. The, the fact that she is essentially dealing with pretty much men who don't want to listen, uh, only care about their own self-interests, or, you know, frankly, what are just there for the money, uh, is, is telling. And then, then there's the detail work, especially in the last scene. Um, and, oh, by the way, if you haven't read the short story by now, what is wrong with you? I mean, no, seriously, go pause this. Go pick up that anthology. Read all the stories there because they're brilliant. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an Ellen Datlow anthology. I mean, you know, that's, that's pretty much the gold standard when it comes to anthologies at this point. But that very end, the tactile sensations that are brought in there, the things that everyone can relate to, um, that is what makes this, makes it grounded and more unreal. At one point she's describing pulling hairs from the shower and the particular scent that's involved there. And uh, that everyone can relate to. It's like uh, Clive Barker once said when he was watching John Carpenter's version of The Thing that throughout all of the insane Rob Bottin effects and everything that happened, the one place that made people squirm the most was when they were, you know, cutting their fingers to do the blood test. Because everyone knows what it's like to get a tiny, really, really painful and annoying and bloody cut on your thumb. So I've learned a lot from this story and thinking about it. And it's going into basically my next attempt at, at writing uh, a short story. It it made me think about how am I going to ground this in reality? What am I going to bring to this that has the strange intruding on that reality? That carries through like a branch creak or a odd shout across a green lawn in a nice neighborhood that captures the moment of, well, what's the story there? What's going on? And, and doesn't do it in a way that folks expect. Because the thing that I'm honestly thinking about adding to my story is, well, a doll. A battered, beaten up, burned porcelain doll. The kind that you very much expect to come alive and devour folks in some Stephen King-based miniseries. But that's, that's forthcoming. Uh, for now, for now, the short story still has me thinking. It still has me looking to take it apart. And that's what all of her short stories do. Um, that's what experimental film did. You know, it, it actually had me crying in a very personal way. I could relate to some, some moments there. Probably not the same ones others could, but, you know, speaking as a former film major who now does this instead of, you know, acts on movie sets or, you know, films, experimental movies out in some loft in Frederick, Maryland, I, there, there were moments that resonated. And I think that's the big key thing. As out there as some of her th stories can be, you still have those personal horrors. And that means this last bit really is also going to be for a, uh, a lit reactor course that she, uh, she teaches. I took that course. It was really well worth it. Um, and I learned quite a bit and thought quite a bit about sort of my writing through that. If you ever 
can get you know the the cash together and the time to take Gemma Files' uh, lit reactor courses, do it without hesitation. If you get a chance to see her at ReaderCon when those open up again, or at any other forum, or you know get a chance to listen to her as a podcast, take the time. It's it's well worth it because um, I think. When we start looking back in, you know, another 10, 15 years, she is going to be spoken up there with the authors we both admire. So, my little prediction. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate everyone uh, putting up with my uh, attempt to, uh, to get out of the house a little bit. And, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Be safe. And... Uh, be seeing you.